Hello and welcome. I'm going to play a game against this Polish player, Marius Tober. Indian game. It's, an, uh, it's always a mystery how they come up with their opening names, you know, and every move, the name of the opening changes. Soon it'll be the Nimzo Indian, right? Oh, he's gone King's Indian. Okay, so there's Nimzo Indian, there's Queen's Indian, there's Kim King's Indian. There's all sorts of Indian defenses. Now he could go for Grunfeld, just a total, totally different setup all today, or he could go with the more King's Indian style. Seems he's going with a King's Indian style. Normal defense. And we're going with the H3 Makogonov variation. That's my personal choice these days. Oh, he went with A6. I don't believe that this person knows how to play that line. Yeah. This is superficial. There's a much deeper line with A6 where there are all ideas with uh, knight coming to eight, A7 like that. That was way too advanced. I never understood. Whenever I was trying to study those Grandmaster games, I never got it. It was a bit too advanced for me. <clears throat> but there are many openings which are only playable if you know how to play those super advanced lines. And uh, this is where you've got to be honest with yourself as a chess player and know where you can handle, you know, where it comes intuitively to you and where it doesn't. And see about how to adapt your game accordingly. Suppose we should try to keep the backward spawn that we can try to target. Bishop and knight defending this. Bishop and knight attacking it. We got one attacker here. What's our plan now? These pawns are going to become vulnerable in the long run, but th those are my strategic aces. The focus should really, really just be on ensuring that I protect these. And I want to play. I want to play this move because it prevents this, which I think. Would, would be a natural move for him. And it allows me to potentially pivot to this side at some point. And it just gives a bit of space here on the queen side. But it does weaken this knight. So now we'll lose peace. <laughs> Oh, he's tripling down on these guys here. So there is pressure. The shore is building.
Hmm. I'm surprised he invested a move in a defensive option like that, but uh, don't mind. I think now that he now that he is invested in the defensive option, I don't mind uh, giving away that uh, backwards pawn as a target. Anyway, his bishop's got it covered. So instead, now we'll go back to the um, the solid double passed pawn strategy. We've got to find a way to not lose one of these, though. Uh, I don't know what to make of my position, but I think I've got to take this. I think probably I should have done it earlier, even. Um... And he should have taken advantage of that. I think he could have won the spawn, but he's misplayed it a bit. Ooh. Now, surely it should be easy for White to just uh, march these guys ahead and, you know, win the game in style, all of that. <clears throat> Probably get our queen here now. Maybe we pivot the rook over here now to this side. Ooh, hostile moves. Okay, I'm going to change the flavor of the game. Sacking a piece for two central pawns and uh, allowing me some more attack as well as defense. I'm going to probably come over here now next. Continue marching these guys on. The motifs are just so strong, you know, and the bishop pair is just so impervious. Oh, is there an option? Is there a trick left? All right. Good, good, good game. I mean, it went down to the wire, I guess you could say. Interesting opening. Probably not sure if I handled this phase of the game particularly well, but it looks like it looks like this wasn't the right idea here, for example. It was a concession, like the pressure was starting to get to me a little bit, the pressure on this. So I May not have played it accurately there. Uh, what could I have done instead on 18? I thought about bishop b3. Uh, oh, wait, not yet, not yet. 
I thought about bishop e3 for sure, but what about this? I guess it's not such a big deal. This is one of those situations where you know you have a, hel a healthy position, but you're just also trying to cling on to things and not lose things. So bishop e3. Wouldn't this be a move? No. Apparently not, because he can't capture back there, because you've got your rook here. Dummy! Oh. But what if he takes it with the bishop instead? The same pattern, apparently. It's the same bloody pattern, yeah. So that was a an error from me, tactical error. And then I think this went okay. Your, yeah. This is maybe a very patient move, these kind of Bishop Stephen style, but after this, it was pretty just easy to take forward. I think this idea of taking that pawn was a good one. In retrospect, it really liberated the bishops and um, I'd say it's an example of most likely a good sacrifice. All right. 